Batman has always been an inspiration to gym goers and anyone looking to improve themselves because he represents the pinnacle of what we imagine to be possible in terms of human performance. He is peak human and he got here through grit and determination alone. If that's what Batman represents, then Steve Rogers represents the next step. He is just beyond peak human. He is the soldier of tomorrow. His speed, strength and stamina are greater than we can ever imagine achieving, but it's only really a bit of transhumanism that stands between him and us. You're a laboratory experiment, Rogers. Everything special about you came out of a bottle. But what makes him so interesting is that the concept isn't really that far-fetched. In fact, this is something that DARPA and other organizations have been working on for a while, creating soldiers that are stronger, faster, smarter, and better than even the best human athletes. And it's not that far removed from what many of us are trying to accomplish with pre-workouts, nootropics, protein shakes, and in some cases, anabolic steroids, of course. And there are even some more out there biomods already available to us regular folks too. Some of which began life as DARPA experiments. So what can we learn from the performance enhancing strategies used by military scientists? How long until wars are fought by superhumans? In this article, I'll be examining the possibility of creating real life super soldiers. The DARPA program that was concerned with the development of super soldiers was actually referred to as the metabolically dominant soldier or later, peak soldier performance. These both sound even more awesome than super soldier. A lot of this research revolved around the subject of powered exoskeletons and other types of equipment, including fabrics with interwoven nanomuscle fibers, jump belts, and the Z-Man project looking at gecko-inspired gloves for wall crawling, like Spider-Man. I'll come back to that in future, but for now we're interested in human enhancements. The project was actually launched in 2002 with the aim of reducing the susceptibility of troops to stress, sleep deprivation, fatigue, pain and blood loss, whilst also enhancing strength, speed, endurance, memory and learning. DARPA has been known to investigate the use of nootropics like aniracetam and modafinil as well. Among many other things, the project looked into a nasal spray called Orexin A, aka Hypocretin, to help reduce the need for sleep. This was a nasal spray intended to reduce the need for sleep by essentially hacking the sleep-wake cycle. This would work similarly to modafinil and it's something I intend to look into further in future. It also is shown to boost cognitive performance. As yet there are no known side effects but it hasn't been studied in the long term and it's not yet widely available. I wouldn't recommend buying this from any dodgy online site but it is an interesting area of research. Likewise DARPA also has a history of experimentation with transcranial direct current stimulation for enhanced learning and activating flow states. This means essentially running a low level current through the brain, not enough to force the neurons to fire, but just enough to increase their excitability and make them more likely to fire. The studies here are very interesting and it's something I'll be coming back to in future. Although there are articles over at thebioneer.com you can read right now. In terms of endurance, another interesting project was the use of cooling gloves intended to regulate temperature and prevent fatigue from overheating. Don't say it, don't you say it, left. come on! I'll be looking in depth at thermal regulation soon, but it just goes to show that, well, temperature management plays a much bigger role in endurance than we often give it credit for. They've also looked at drugs for enhancing endurance, and that's sometimes referred to as Energizer Bunny in Fatigues. A Dan Farber Cancer Institute pathologist, Lanbo Chen, likewise found that blending a green tea extract with B vitamins could triple the endurance of lab rats by exponentially increasing their mitochondria production. Unfortunately, the same drink only managed to increase the performance of cyclists by 3% in human trials. But that said, the drink is still being tested. Pain vaccines are another area of interest for DARPA. Another very interesting project looked at creating pain vaccines to block the sense of pain in less than 10 seconds, lasting for up to 30 days. What's more is that this pain blocking would not prevent the initial shock reflex response necessary to avoid injury. So you'd still pull your hand away from a hot stove, for instance. It seems to target chronic pain more specifically by working on the inflammatory response. This research is currently undergoing animal trials. In 2008, DARPA officially abandoned its metabolic dominance program. That doesn't mean they aren't still interested in creating super soldiers. In 2009, one researcher, Andrew Herr, was tasked with researching something called unit cohesion. This is the ability of a group of soldiers to continue fighting even when exhausted, dehydrated, confused and stressed. Unit cohesion is often one of the deciding factors in the outcome of a severe conflict. And it could be considered very akin to a kind of group flow state, which is something that people like Stephen Kotler have observed. 
Hare identified many of the neurochemicals that would enhance or dampen performance during such a high stress situation and used things such as transcranial direct current stimulation and the injections of neuropeptide Y in order to try and keep soldiers alert and calmly focused. I discussed neuropeptide Y in my video on flow states recently, along with DHEA. It appears to be one of the chemicals that helps to support optimal performance in high stakes scenarios. I was interested in using neuropeptide Y as part of a nootropic stack myself, though I need to look into this a lot deeper as it also causes a raise in blood pressure, along with increased appetite and weight gain. Not so Captain America. The British Royal Society also shed light on four small-scale DARPA Biomod programs focused on neurological enhancement and stress reduction. Brain-machine interface programs are also very much on the table. So DARPA has researched and still is researching a whole host of fascinating super soldier-like techniques and strategies, and we can learn just by looking at which things they've chosen to focus on and then doing our own research into those areas. But what really makes the idea of Captain America so appealing to many people though is the fact that he gets all of his powers and abilities from a single serum. The idea that you could inject something once, or even occasionally, and thus gain a permanent increase in muscle is something that many people find inherently appealing. So is this possible? Actually, this is also something that researchers have been working on. I've previously discussed the idea of using gene doping, for instance, to block the production of myostatin. Myostatin is a naturally occurring substance that limits the amount of muscle that the human body will pack on, presumably to keep us energy efficient. Gene doping techniques allow us to temporarily or even permanently block this substance, resulting in an increase in muscle mass up to 30%. The technique has been used successfully and repeatedly in animal studies, and the mutation has even been known to occur naturally in humans. And as I reported recently, one biohacker streamed a video injecting himself with CRISPR to just such an end. CRISPR being the delivery method that is used to insert these new genes. This technology is far from perfected though. CRISPR is not a flawless technique, it's ideal for use in controlled animal studies to help us improve our understanding of DNA, but it'll only be effective within a small area, meaning that it might take multiple injections to see much of a difference across the body, unless it's injected into a zygote prior to birth. Not only that, but it can sometimes cut the DNA in the wrong place, resulting in strange defects or potentially even cancer. So it's a high risk procedure, even if some people portray it otherwise. Not only that, but blocking myostatin entirely might be a fool's errand in itself seeing as it can lead to tendon damage. But there is another exercise pill out there which is further along and which some people are already taking. It's called GW501516, but its friends call it 516. The aim is to mimic the effects of endurance exercise on the gene PPAR Delta. Effectively, if successful, this pill could replace the need for distance running or endurance exercise altogether. When 516 binds to the PPAR delta gene, it enhances its fat burning signal. In one mouse study, two mice were observed. These mice were fed a high fat and sugar diet, similar to cookie dough, and were left to their own devices with a wheel in their cage. Mouse A, codenamed Couch Potato, was given no 516 and was observed to be overweight, lethargic, and greasy. Their words, not mine. Mouse B, on the other hand, was given 516 and was not only lean and toned, but also full of energy. In monkeys, administration of 516 lowers bad cholesterol, insulin levels, and triglycerides. Tim Wilson, who discovered the drug while looking for a treatment for diabetes, initially believed that this was a wonder drug for metabolic syndrome. And yes, some bodybuilders and other athletes are already using this substance, with runners reporting that it helps them to avoid hitting the wall, increasing endurance seemingly by increasing the availability of ATP. In 2009, the World Anti-Doping Agency banned 516. That's when you know you're doing something right. The catch? 516 is highly toxic. Animal studies also show that the development of cancer in many of the participants across numerous organs. The FDA determined that the risks outweighed the side effects and it was shelved pending a 70 year study. So just to be clear, I am absolutely not recommending or advocating the use of 516, but it is interesting. And given time and study, perhaps researchers could overcome its current limitations. The molecular and developmental biologist responsible for the aforementioned mouse study, Ron Evans, has speculated that the same effect could eventually be achieved on a more permanent basis via gene doping by targeting the PPAR delta gene. In time, gene doping techniques as well will inevitably improve, with better vectors, delivery methods, and perhaps with more of a focus on epigenetics rather than permanent change. Likewise, methods to mitigate the effects on tendons could eventually make myostatin blocking a safe option too. 
If you could then combine both into a single injection, you would have a single serum that would make you faster, stronger, more resilient, and more ripped. Permanently, just like Steve Rogers. Now combine that with cooling gloves, nano muscle fiber, a pain vaccine, an endurance cocktail, and nootropics. Cool, right? Most of us use chemicals and supplements to enhance our performance in the gym and at work in some way. Almost all of us use painkillers. You could say that we're all super soldiers. So there you have it, super soldiers are real and more awesome supplements are coming. Along with Batman, that makes Captain America certainly one of the most realistic superheroes. What can you take from this right now? I'm not saying that you should go out there and experiment with any of these things. In fact, it should maybe alarm you that some of the stuff we're already taking in is quite as potent as it is. I use DMHA in my Kraken pre-workout right now, and while the effects are wicked, I'm not sure it's such a good idea. More on this soon. In future though, I'll be researching a lot of these ideas in more detail, such as the use of Orexin A and increasing neuropeptide Y, so stay tuned for that. And my hope is to eventually use this to create a flow stack which I'll share in part 3 of my flow state video series. For biohackers, keeping an idea on what DARPA's doing is just a sensible way of getting some inspiration. And if we're to take the lead of DARPA, then areas that we should all look into a little more include things like unit cohesion, flow states, thermoregulation, mitochondrial density, and accelerated learning. Apparently that is how you build a super soldier. So I hope you found this video useful and interesting, guys. If you did, then please leave a like, please share it around, that helps me immensely. Comment down below and let me know if there's any interesting studies or research that you know of that I've missed. And be sure to stay tuned and subscribe to the channel if you want more on brain training, transhumanism, bodybuilding, fitness, calisthenics, productivity, technology, all that good stuff, you name it. If that sounds good, then thanks a ton for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now. Oh, and guys, remember, I'm still collecting images and videos and descriptions of home bat caves. So that's any cool home gym slash home office. I'm going to be doing a video on my home bat cave, the bio lab, and I'd love to feature some of the contributions that you guys have so that we can compare notes and see what makes an awesome space for productivity and fitness training. So if you've got a home gym or a home office, then head over to the Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash the Bioneer, find that thread and then submit your picture or video and I might feature it in that upcoming video. So yeah, check that out, thanks a ton. Oh, and of course, as always, check out the accompanying article that goes with this video over at thebioneer.com uh, there's a much more detailed version and you'll find uh, extra information on um, old-fashioned methods uh, used to enhance the performance of soldiers, among other things. So yeah, check that out. Oh, and all the studies, of course.